This is Phineas Gage, otherwise known as the Immortal Man, the walking miracle himself. This is an incredible story which is not only jaw-droppingly insane, but goes a long way to somewhat better understand how this big old brain up here actually works. The year is 1848, in which a bunch of foremen were cutting a railroad bed in Vermont, USA. One of the railroad and construction foremen was our man of the hour, Phineas P. Gage. One day he was directing the blasting of rock to prepare a road bend for the Rutland and Burlington Railroad. A boring hole would be created in the rock, which would then have blasting powder and a fuse added alongside some clay, sand and other materials to basically pack it into place. This would then utilise a long iron rod, called a tampering iron, which was about 43 inches long, which is inserted into the material, into the hole and to contain the blast in the rock. Not gonna lie, it's a dangerous job, but someone's gotta do it. And in this case, it was unfortunately Phineas Gage. And you know what? As far as careers are concerned, I'm gonna stick to just still making videos on the internet. I think the worst injury I could get is possibly hurting myself by sitting in the chair funny. So we all gotta take our scrapes and bumps every now and again, don't we? So on the fateful day in question, he grabbed his iron rod, shoved it in the hole and well, for whatever reason, he seemed potentially distracted by whatever his fellow foreman was doing and the rod sparked against one of the rocks resulting in the gunpowder exploding. This caused a huge explosion, sending him and the tampering rod flying. The rod, which may I remind you is 43 inches long and 1.25 inches in diameter, weighing 13.25 pounds, shot straight through Phineas's head. The rod penetrated the left cheek, went behind the eye, straight through the skull and out the back of the head. So this is pretty serious. Sorry if you're eating whilst watching this video, but then again, you saw the thumbnail and you knew what was coming, so uh, I'm placing the blame on you for this one. Like anyone would, he was completely thrown back by this, and he had some brief convulsions with his arms and legs, but he managed to speak within a few minutes of the accident happening, walking with little assistance. You'd imagine that anybody that just had a huge iron rod getting shot through their head is pretty much going to be an endgame for anybody, but for some strange reason, Phineas survived, and he seemed okay with it. I mean, yes, every 15 to 20 minutes he started regurgitating blood, but he was conscious, he was awake, and he was able to, well, get on with life. But soon he was patched up, and after a little bit of surgery to close the wound with some adhesive straps, he would basically wear a modified nightcap to basically keep his head together. Hopefully the poor guy was okay, and at this time of need, all he needed was the support of his loved ones. However, that was the biggest understatement of the century due to the fact that as time went on and shortly after the operation, he had no real desire or care to see his friends or family. And all he wanted to do was go back to work. Look, I don't know if this was shock or just the fact that he thought having an iron rod shot through your head was just an everyday thing and thought, eh, be fine, we'll go back to work you know, doing the same job that just caused you to have this massive, horrific event happen in the first place, but that's just me. It wasn't all plain sailing for Phineas, however, as it took quite some time for him to recover a somewhat normal state, being blind in his left eye and having a prolonged period of convulsions, deliriousness, and was even in a coma-like state for weeks following the accident. Alongside his treatment and recovery, he was regularly contacted by a doctor called John Martin Harlow, where he studied and noted changes, having known Phineas prior to the accident. Alongside his doctor, many of his friends noticed that he was not quite the same Phineas Gage that they knew before. Since the accident, his attitude changed and with that, they noticed that his behaviour altered as well. Might have had something to do with the giant iron rod getting shot through your brain, but, but you know what, my guess is as good as yours. Yes, your friend might be a little bit of a dick right now, but you've also got to cut him some slack because of what happened, so you know what, take it with a grain of salt. His behaviour affected his relations so much that the company who previously hired him as a railroad labourer no wanted to take him back due to his tendencies to be short with people, being unable to carry out instructions, and his vocabulary now being filled with many, many obscenities. He had completely changed from the person they knew. Whilst Phineas Gage was a walking miracle, the man who survived this horrible accident, he had to still get a job elsewhere, despite everything that happened. 
He managed to get a job working in a stable and driving coaches in Chile for some time, before going back to live with his relatives in San Francisco. After a series of seizures he started to experience at the age of 36, he would soon pass. And whilst it was incredible that he still managed to live so long despite this accident, what they found after he died was probably equally as amazing. Harlow, the doctor that was studying Phineas shortly after his accident, got in touch with the family and asked if he was able to examine the body. They said, sure, why, why the hell not? This of course was all for the benefit of science, to which his skull was exhumed and it was personally delivered to Harlow himself. I mean, who wouldn't be curious to find out what happened here? A bloody iron rod got shot through his head and it's basically a miracle that he survived for as long as he did. So what did he find? The rod itself was actually kept by Gage until his dying days, almost like a memento of what happened. But this was also delivered to Dr. Harlow. Gage may have been the first case to suggest that the brain's role in determining personality and that damage to specific parts of the brain might induce specific personality changes. This is a strange case in such a drastic change of behaviour, but it should be noted that the mental changes published after his death were much more dramatic than anything reported whilst he was alive. Even came from Harlow himself, so I guess his early findings based on what you believe is maybe not quite as scientific as you'd first think. However, Harlow's studies then went on and delved further into this to try and really draw a line between the big massive metal iron rod going through your head and the behavioural changes afterwards, basically showing that damage to the brain does in fact have unintended side effects. This story was important nonetheless, and for anybody that has ever studied psychology in their entire lives, you know for a fact that you've studied this guy, because, well, <laughs> my god, it's in every single textbook you'll ever see. But, interesting nonetheless. That is Phineas Gage, the miracle man himself. If you guys like that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.